Tucked away just off of Highway 2 is one of the hidden gems of Hinsdale, Montana. We are very proud of Gloria and her many talents. Her pottery is renowned for its style and beauty, as well as its utility. The shop is full of wonderful works of art, and many treasure their collections of clean pottery. This is one stop you don't want to miss when traveling across the High Line. Welcome to Clint Pottery. My name's Gloria and I've been a potter for 41 years this year and I started in an old homestead shack on our ranch south of Hinsdale for 18 years and it was full of mice and a bull snake joined us as well as a rattlesnake on the threshold one day. So I worked there for 18 years and carried water there because there was no facility for water. And then I built this studio and I've been here 22 or 3 years. And it, and it does have running water and no mice and no snakes. So um, I'll begin by wedging some clay and showing you um, the processes. My clay comes from Archie Gray Foundation in Helena and I'll get in two or three ton at a time. I started back in 1976. Peggy Cornwell encouraged me to take pottery classes with her in Glasgow. And at first I didn't like the class and wanted to quit. If there are air bubbles in the clay, it will explode in the firing and land on your neighbor's pieces or your pieces. So each piece has at least 15 different processes before it's ever complete. So that's throwing the pot, just throwing it on the potter's wheel. And you want it nice and centered so it's easier to center and form the piece you want. I hope to make Bowl. And by putting a little water on the clay piece, it makes your hands slip around much easier. And notice my hands are connected together, resembling a pliers, and so they work together as one tool. So that's centering the, the pot. And if you want a tall, slender pot, it would be so spread out. This is going to be a platter, so it's spread out. This process is opening the pot. Then release easy so it doesn't get out of center. Now I'm just putting pressure on the bottom of the pot get my fingerprints out of there and also by constricting the clay it makes it stronger. And this is just a little grip tool that helps smooth it out and condense the clay as well. The next step is pulling the walls up to make them thinner and release easy and control your top and bring some of that clay up from the bottom and release easy, control your top. So this will be a bowl-like platter. I'll take away this extra clay that's holding up the walls before I get it too laid over and can't get to it. Just remove that clay. And I can reuse the, the, that part of the clay. So by using pressure on the inside, help shape the platter. When I make these, I'll, I might make around 30 or 40 at a time because that's the most efficient way to use my time. As you can see in the back, I have all these different um, 
pieces that were thrown in the drying. Like those are um, berry bowls and casseroles and some mugs. Okay, after that stage it has to dry and then I go back and trim it and then it has to dry totally till it's bone dry. If it has any moisture, it will explode in the kiln. Um, then after it has dried until it feels not cold to your cheek, it can be loaded in the kiln for the bisque firing, which takes about three and a half hours. And then from the bisque firing, it's unloaded and then glazed. I'll make a bunch of glazes, maybe 40 gallons at a time, and glaze all the pieces, reload the kiln, and high fire, which is 10 hours to 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's hotter than when the space shuttle re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. It takes three days to cool off, and on the third day I can unload the kiln. This is a bone dry mug ready to be loaded into the bisque kiln, and it will be fired for three and a half hours until it's um, in the bisque, which is easier to handle when I do the glazes. So this, this would be the bisque stage for the mugs and the kiln's plump full and in the firing for this pottery can touch each other like I can put small pieces into the larger pieces to um, really get a load of out and but for the firing of the glazes um, pieces cannot touch they can be very close together like paper thin close together uh, but if they touch then they're melted together so that's the difference between the glaze firing and the bis firing and the difference of the temperature too because the high fire is the glaze firing. These mugs have been dipped in the glaze and all the glaze has to be cleaned off the bottom otherwise when it turns to a glass it will be adhered to the kiln shelf so each piece after its glaze has to be cleaned off pretty precisely and then I just stack it on these boards and when I get a kiln load cool, I'll um, load the kiln, fire it to 2400 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 hours, and then on the third day, I can unload it. I grind off all the bottoms after I unload the kiln for the high fire, and then also I learned in like about 1988 to put a silicone on the bottom so that pottery doesn't scratch. And my customers really appreciate that because of their fine um, furniture nowadays. Um, that was their chief complaint, is pottery scratch. So, uh, and by putting silicone on, it goes in the oven and it also goes to the dishwasher. I've never had a complaint. Today we are celebrating Grandma's 40th anniversary with um, oh, doing thin pottery. Um, it's been really fun to be involved with the process and helping her out with the holiday play fest. We get to see a lot of friends and family during this time and we're just really proud of Grandma for working this hard for this long and creating all these beautiful pieces and we're thankful that people enjoy it and we get to share it So, thank you. Okay, well, I've helped my grandma since I was like six, and I've made an escape table before I can get the best affair from that, and just kind of been playing with the clay since then. <laughs> it's always been a blast <laughs> helping my grandma with the holiday play fest and everything, and got to meet lots of people. It's just kind of been fun every year, it's something to look forward to. All that. Well, it's wonderful to have it in our little community. And I've been buying Gloria stuff since the 1980s. But 1980, I think I bought my first stuff. And she does a beautiful job. And we're so thankful to have her. Oh, I like it all. I have tons of it. But yeah, I've bought lots over the years. And start out, she used to come to a specialty fair or a craft fair. And that's when I bought the first stuff. Yeah, I've been shopping with her for many years. Hi, uh, my name is Susan, and I'm actually from Ardley, Montana, but originally from Glasgow. And I enjoy stopping in on this uh, little pottery store when we come back and forth to come home. It's kind of a highlight to see what she has new, and always be able to pick up local gifts for fun and for our family who love being here in this valley too. I think my favorite story of Quinn Pottery is um, a couple years ago I had a birthday party and I had relatives and friends come out 
and they liked my pottery and they kind of wanted to uh, see what she had. And I talked to her and she was going to be home on Sunday, but she left it, the door open so we could come in and look around. And they stayed in the car. They weren't sure that you, you should really get out and go in because, you know, that's, they might get in trouble and be arrested. So anyway, we came in and, and looked around and um, Gloria left us some cookies and a note on the counter so they knew that she was expecting us. And she left a huge plate of cookies, there were four of us, and at the, before we left, we ate them all. And uh, my sister just said, who was from Minneapolis, said to tell uh, Gloria that well, there were eight of us, there were not four of us. <laughs> and they had so much fun shopping, they couldn't believe they could come in here and just wander around. And um, it worked out to be really a good, a good day.